Hey Advanced Maths, welcome back to McGrathematics. We are starting off with a flashback from the 2015 HSC exam. The first three terms of an arithmetic series are 3, 7 and 11. What is the 15th term of this series? Pause the video and have a go yourself. All right, so we know for this arithmetic series, our starting term is three and the distance between each of our consecutive terms is four. So our deep value is four. Now to find the 15th term, we're gonna use our term of an arithmetic series formula from the last video. We're gonna set n equal to 15, a is three, d is four. So we get three plus 14 times four, giving us an answer of 59. So well done if you said option A. Okay, our next lesson today is on arithmetic series. So last video we were focusing on arithmetic sequences. Now we're going to add those sequences together, which makes it a series. Fun fact, I actually already recorded this lesson today and my computer crashed. So I have to start again. Yay. All right, here we go for the second time, arithmetic series. Starting off with a question, all right? Now you can't use a calculator for this. You've just got to use your gut instinct. It's which of these is larger? Option one is three plus five plus seven plus nine plus 11. Option two is seven plus seven plus seven plus seven plus seven. What do you reckon? If you're looking at these two and saying, but McGrathematics, these two have the same value. You are very, very, very smart. The top sum is equal to 35 and five times seven is also 35. Now, why is this important? Well, because the top one is an arithmetic series and the middle of the arithmetic series is seven. What this means is if you wanna to sum together an arithmetic series, all you really need to do is find the number in the middle and then multiply that by how many terms in your series. So the middle was seven. If we just multiply seven by five, we get the sum of the series. Okay, so the way we're gonna do it is you take your first number and your last number and you divide it by two. That's how you find the middle of two numbers. You add them and divide by two. Multiply by how many terms you have and then we get our series sum. Writing this as a formula, we're gonna say that the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic series where um, a is the first term and l is the last term and n is, like I said, how many terms we have. This value right here is gonna add the first and the last cut them in half to find the middle and then multiply by how many we have. Uh, this is on the formula sheet. However, um, it's pretty circumstantial that we can use this because it's quite often that we don't know what the last term in the series is. What we can do is we can take this formula and we can replace the L for last term with our nth term formula from the last lesson. Okay, so another way of writing the last term of a series is the nth term of a series using this formula in red from last video. Okay, simplifying by putting the a's together, we end up with n over two outside of two a plus n minus one d. And this is the sum of an arithmetic series formula that we'll be using most of the time. It's very rare that we can use this one in blue. This one in green is much more useful because all you need to know is a, d, and n, and then you've got your sum. Let's have a look at some examples. Here's our first one. Find the sum of the first 20 terms of this series. Okay, the series is arithmetic. We're starting with minus two and we're adding on six each time. So our A is minus two, our D is six. We're using our sum of an arithmetic series formula. We are finding the sum of the first 20 terms. So N is going to be 20. So we have 20 over two outside of two times minus two plus. Now if N is 20 and minus one will be 19, multiply that by six and we get a total answer of 1,100. So there is the sum of the first 20 terms. For our next one, kind of similar, we are summing together a arithmetic series, except we are summing from nine up to 225. All right, the reason this question is more challenging is because to find the sum of an arithmetic series, we need to know how many terms we are summing together. So we have our starting term of nine, we have our distance of eight, but we don't know how many terms there are that get us up to 225. So our first task is to figure out what number in the sequence 225 is. To do that, we'll use our nth term formula from once again, last video, very formula, uh, sorry, very useful little formula. A is gonna be nine, D is gonna be eight, um, and our term is gonna be equal to 225, and we are gonna solve for N, in this case, N minus one. So 225 equals nine plus N minus one times eight, a few different ways of solving this. I'm going to expand out the brackets. So we have nine plus eight n minus eight. 
Simplifying this, 9 minus 8 is equal to 1, so we can have 8n plus 1 is equal to 225. Subtract the 1 and then divide by 8, and we get that n is equal to 28. So this tells us that 225 is the 28th term in the series. So to sum together these values, we need to sum together 28 terms. So now we have our value of n, we're going to use our sum formula. n is 28, a is 9, and d is 8. Substituting in these values looks like this. n is 28, so n minus 1 is of course 27. Uh, this gives us a value of 3276 as our sum of the series. Okay, for our next one, we have up to which term will the series, oh, sorry, will the sum of the series, 5 plus 9 plus 13, etc., be equal to 152? Okay, for this one, we are once again using our arithmetic sum series, except this time we know what the answer is. We want to find up to which term. So we want to find the value of n that we need to sum up to to get an answer of 152. So our starting value of 5, our distance between each term is going to be 4. We're using our arithmetic sum formula, but like I said, we know what the answer is. We know the left-hand side is 152. We know what A is, we know what D is, we don't know what N is. So that is the goal of this question, is to find the value of N in this equation. Okay, we can multiply the two across to get 304. Inside the bracket, we get 10 plus 4N minus 4. Now we'll multiply everything by N, so we'll have 4N times N will get us N squared. 10 minus 4 is 6, multiplied by n is 6n. Now we have an n squared term and an n term, so now it's looking like a quadratic equation because we have a squared. When you have a quadratic, the best thing to do is to put all your terms on one side equal to 0 and then go from there. So we're going to have 4n squared plus 6n, take away 304 is equal to 0, and now we're going to solve this quadratic. We can make things a bit easier because we have a common factor of 2, so we can divide everything by 2 and get 2n squared plus 3n, minus 152 equal to 0. Now, if you're feeling super brave, you can factorize this expression, but I'm guessing most students will be probably leaning towards the quadratic formula. So here's our quadratic formula. b is going to be 3, a is 2, and c is equal to negative 152. So we'll substitute those values into our quad form. Here we have, just a reminder, these dots, these mean multiplication, just a bit of a shorthand. So 9 minus 4 times 2 times minus 152. The bottom is going to turn into 4. Inside of our square root, we get 1, 2, 2, 5, which is conveniently a square number, which gives us a whole number answer. Now, our quadratic formula, as it usually does, is going to give us two answers. One of them will be positive and the other will be negative. We're going to ignore the negative answer because, remember, we're trying to find up to which term of the series we are adding up to 152. We can't add up a negative amount of numbers in our series. It doesn't really make sense. So for this context, only the positive solution of 8 uh, makes sense. So we ignore the negative 1 for now because n must be greater than 0. So there we go. The first 8 terms of this sequence will add together and give us 152. Okay, question four now. We have the sum of the first 12 terms of an arithmetic series is 186, and then the 20th term is 83 find the sum of the first 40 terms. Okay, getting pretty challenging now. So the goal of the question is to find the sum of the first 40 terms. To find that, we need to know what the starting term, so A, and we need to know what the constant difference D is. The information we have is that the sum of the first 12 terms is equal to 186. So sum of 12 should be equal to 186. So left-hand side is 186, the value of N is 12. So we have 12 over 2 at the front, 2a plus 11 times d. We don't know what a and d are just yet. Okay, 12 over 2 is equal to 6, so we get 6 times 2a is 12a, and 6 times 11d is 66d. Now we're going to label this as 1 because this is a question where we are going to be applying simultaneous equations. Whenever you have two variables that you are trying to solve for, simultaneous equations is usually going to be the way to go. So there's equation one, we need to get another equation. So the other info we have is that term number 20 is equal to 83. So let's use our term of an arithmetic sequence formula. We're gonna set this equal to 83 and the value of n is going to be 20 because it's the 20th term. So we have 83 equal to a plus 20 minus one times d. Here we have another equation and it doesn't link up very nicely with this one just yet. So what I'm going to do is take all three terms and multiply them by 12. 
So A times 12 is 12A, 19D times 12 is 228D, and 83 times 12 is 996. I'm gonna label this as equation two. The reason I multiplied this by 12 is because now in both equations, we have a 12A in common. So now if I subtract these two equations, those 12As are gonna be eliminated and we can solve for D. So the smart move now is to do equation two, take away equation one. So 12A take away 12A will be zero. 228D take away 66D is gonna be equal to 162D. And 996 take away 186 is 810. Okay, now we solve for D by dividing by 162 and 810 divided by 162 works out to be five. So the constant difference between our terms is five. Um, if we sub this into one of our equations, this one here with the 83 looks pretty friendly. So we're gonna have 83 equals A plus 19 times five. If we solve this, five times 19 is uh, 95. If we do 83 take away 95, we get A equals minus 12. Okay, now we have our A and we have our D. We can use our sum formula up here in red to find the sum of the first 40 terms. So using our red formula here, making N equal to 40, we're making A equal to minus 12 and we're letting D equal five. This gives us a correct final answer of 3,420. So quite a lot of work to get to that point. If this was an assessment style question, would have to be at least um, three marks for the three steps. Okay, up next we have a more algebraic example. We have show that x plus one, two x plus four, three x plus seven are the first three terms in an arithmetic sequence, and then find the sum of the first 50 terms. Okay, so to show that these three pieces of algebra are forming an arithmetic sequence, we just need to show that there is a constant difference between them, which is not too hard. If we look at x, two x, and three x, we can see each time we are adding on a value of x. If we look at the constants, we have one, four, and seven. So each time we must also be adding on a value of three. This means we have a consistent difference of x equal, oh, sorry, or equal to x plus three. It's consistent between our three terms, so it's an arithmetic sequence. Okay, so it's arithmetic. We have our first term being x plus one, and we have our distance between each terms being x plus three. Yeah, if that's not super clear to you, what you can do is do two x plus four, take away x plus one, and you'll get an answer of x plus three. Okay, we're trying to find the sum of our first 50 terms. So here's our arithmetic sum formula. N will be 50, our A will be x plus one, and our D will be x plus three. And because N is 50, N minus one is of course 49. Okay, here's our expression. We're just going to um, simplify this as best we can. So we get 25 out the front, inside we get two x plus two, and then 49 x plus 147. Simplifying that further, we have 25 outside of 51x plus 149. Multiply these by 25 and we have our fully simplified answer of 1275x plus 3725 as our sum of the first 50 terms. Okay, now we're looking at an HSE question from 2011. It was a band two and three question, so it's not super challenging, but we're still just warming up on this stuff. We have a skyscraper of 110 floors to be built. First floor will cost 3 million. Each subsequent floor will be half a million dollars more than the floor immediately below. All right, that tells us that each time um, we look at a new floor, we are adding on 0 0.5 million. So we're adding on the same amount each time, which means we have an arithmetic series. Okay, part I, what will be the cost of building the 25th floor? Feeling confident? Please pause the video and try this uh, by yourself before I run through my solution. Okay, so the 25th floor, we can think of as the 25th term in our arithmetic sequence. So all we need to do is find the 25th term. Uh, you don't have to use three million and half a million. You can make it a bit simpler by just having three and a half, and then we'll multiply by a million when we get our answer to make it all a bit nicer. So starting with three, adding on 0 0.5 each time. Here is our arithmetic term formula. We are trying to find the 25th term. So N is going to be 25. So we have three plus 24 times a half, gets us an answer of 15. That tells us that the 25th floor must cost $15 million. There you go, just for recognizing it's an arithmetic sequence and applying the correct formula, it's a very straightforward two marks out of 100 on the exam. Okay, for part two, we have what will be the cost of building all 110 floors of the skyscraper? So we're doing 3 million plus 3.5 million plus 4 million, all the way up so we have 110 
terms in our sequence. Because we are adding up all our floors together, we are finding the sum of an arithmetic sequence. Our A and our D are unchanged, except now we're using our sum formula from before. 110 floors, so we are summing together 110 terms to get a total answer. So the value of N is 110, um, A is 3 and D is uh, 0 0.5, and minus 1 is 109. This calculation gets us an answer of 3,327.5, but remember we need to multiply our answer by a million and then chuck a dollar sign on it. So here we have multiplied by a million, we end up with 3,327,500,000 to build this 110 floor skyscraper. All right, beautiful. And to finish off for today, um, a more challenging question involving logarithms. We have our series here and we wanna show the series is arithmetic. We want to find the seventh term and we want to add together the first seven terms. Let's dive in. So to show the series is arithmetic, once again, we need to show that there is a consistent difference between all of our terms. The way we can do that is by doing some subtractions and being a bit clever with our logarithms. So let's look at from log four to log eight, we'll find the difference by working backwards and do log eight take away log four. Now, hopefully you know your logarithm properties by now and you know that when you are subtracting two logs, you can divide the subjects and we can write this as log eight over four. Eight over four is of course two, so the difference from log four to log eight is log two. Let's see if it's the same thing from log eight to log 16. So we'll do log 16, take away log eight, once again, we'll combine them by dividing the subjects of the logarithms. So we have log of 16 over eight. 16 over eight, once again, is equal to two. So what do you know? We have a consistent difference between our terms. Therefore, our series is clearly arithmetic. So our value of D between each of our terms is log two. Now for part two, we're finding the seventh term. So we need our values of A being our first term of log four, our D being log two, which we just established. We are finding the seventh term, so here is our nth term formula. Setting n equal to seven, a equal to log four, and d equal to log two. Okay, here's our correct answer. Now we're just gonna simplify this and show off our knowledge of logarithms. So one way we can do this is by the number at the front of the logarithm can actually be raised to the power of the subject. Okay, so six log two is equal to log two to the power of six. Now we can combine the sum of two logarithms by multiplying the subjects. So we have log of four times two to the six. Four times two to the six works out to be 256. And so the seventh term is log 256. Okay, for our last question, to sum together the first seven terms, once again, we have our sum formula. Uh, we have our value of A from before being uh, log four, of course, and our value of D is still log two. N is seven, so out the front we have seven over two. Okay, let's multiply everything by three and a half, which is seven over two. So three and a half lots of two is going to be seven. Three and a half lots of six is going to be 21. So we have seven log four plus 21 log two. This is a correct answer, but once again, we're going to simplify it using our knowledge of logarithms. So we're gonna write log four as log of two squared, because four is of course two squared. Now, remember that power in the logarithm uh, in the reverse of what we just did, that can be brought out the front to multiply. So seven log two to the two is equal to 14 log two, okay? Because two times seven is 14. Now we have 14 log two plus 21 log two. So it's like 14 X plus 21 X. The answer is 35 X. And there is our nice and simplified answer. The sum of the first seven terms. All right, cool. The only thing more fun than teaching that once was teaching it twice. So thank you so much for watching and catch you next time. Bye for now.